Yeah. My brother's a millionaire. Welcome to These Are My Friends. These are my friends. We are outside. This is my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to These Are My Friends. These are my friends. We are outside. Uh, Reporting live on location. It's a big deal for us. We don't really go outside. So uh, it's actually really beautiful here. Look at those. I don't know. Just look how the trees are coming out of the bushes. It looks so beautiful. Two Duke dudes sitting on a park bench. Dizzy D, my boy. Fresh slice monkey wrench. Oh, he hit it. He hit it with the... With the which is, is that your name? <laughs> Is that what they that call is you? my name. That is what they call me. <laughs> under bridge. Under bridge monkey wrench. Yeah. Okay. That's, um, where, that's where we're chilling under the bridge. Beautiful, beautiful in Victoria, BC, on location. Um, I got some interesting stories to talk about today. All right, what you got, man? Um. So, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I got a couple things. Um, first off, funny story to tell uh, about a legendary movie contract the most legendary movie contract in the world is could you guess what actress it would be actress i just give you a hint they register it as one of the most legendary movie contracts ever a titanic maybe or something you'd think something like that but it wasn't it was actually cameron diaz and bad teacher have you seen that movie bad teacher yeah no but i want to now because obviously they had to pay her a lot to do the movie it's a fluff well actually she just made a really good deal so deals like these are certainly common but there's one deal that stands out from the rest cameron diaz's bad teacher agreement for the movie diaz was paid a mere one million dollars which is nothing but she received as back end bonuses a portion of box office earnings, which oh, secured her idea. over forty million for the movie. This is known as one of the most legendary deals in Hollywood history. It's increased an increase of thirty nine hundred percent. Nicely done. Yeah. Nicely done. Well done. And this leads to the other Smart thing lady. she's done, which is just a, a, a funny instance. And it's just one of those things. It's like, what the fuck am I doing with my day job for Shrek Two? Her hourly rate. Guess what it was. Nine million seven thousand one hundred eighty-seven cents. That was an awfully good guess because that was her overall. There's a horse and carriage. It's an, an old wooden bike just went <laughs> over top of us. <laughs> iron wheels. Uh, we're, do- we're doing this live outside in 1866. <laughs> yeah, we decided we would just dip to the most traffic-infested area. Yeah, it's cool. Um, you can't find a lot of beautiful forests here on Vancouver Island, and we've chosen one right beside a very main road. It's cool, though. But we'll do better next time. I it like actually it. is really cool. I, the I really is like dope. it. We're going to take some shots of the place, probably. I mean, We're chilling under a bridge, yo. Yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't be here otherwise. Uh, anyway, so $10 million was your guess, and that was a really good guess for her for her hourly rate, but that's what she made overall. But she worked Did 10 I guess hours. $10 million? You said $9 million point oh, something, yeah, yeah. something, something, oh, something. Anyway. Anyway, she made $1 million an hour. <laughs> One million bucks an hour. What do you think we're doing right now, man? Come on. Making one million bucks an hour. Yeah, we're making one million bucks an hour. Yeah, take that, Cameron. Yeah, throw that extra 1,000 right on the top of that because your your girl won this 1,000 bucks. Insane. So she worked 10 hours on Shrek 2 to record her five hours over two days, and she made 10 million bucks. Hourly rate, a million bucks. Like, that's CEO of huge tech firms. I'd do it for like... Yearly salary. I'd do it for like half. Yeah, you know? I'd, I'd be Princess Fiona. We're back. <laughs> They're coming. They're moving the artillery over top of us right now. We They're have to be a little bit us. quieter, probably, or they'll find us. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, the German intrusion is happening. The right German intrusion. <laughs> They're intruding, <laughs> sir. What do we do? The Germans have intruded, <laughs> but they weren't invited at all. I know That's... it's very rude, sir. We agree. The Geneva Convention also agrees. It's definitely by all definitions very rude to intrude very anyway. rude to intrude yeah. um cool man all right i, I heard cool. you, have a, <laughs> you have a good burger Sick. king story oh yeah well i don't have a good burger king story because who the hell has a good burger king story uh, if you fries. have a like i said it's those are made out of toilet paper that has been soaked in water and stuffed into sawdust and salted and put in the deep fryer. They're not bad. But I don't want to like, see how the sausage is made. I just want to eat it. I suppose so. Well, this I did that mentality yesterday, and my gut really hurts right now because of it. <laughs> I'm, he's like, how you doing? I'm like, oh, yeah, I just doubled over, like, you know, the regular, just feeling terrible from a burkang. But, uh, yeah. Kruger bing. <laughs> went in there. Kruger bing. I went in there, and uh, I was it was out of. We had to. We were at the show last night. There was a, a punk and hardcore show uh, at Centennial Square last night that we went down to. We 
went normally it's Torfly's band practice night, but we played a little bit beforehand. I drummed a bit and then we like took a took a little band field trip and went down to see um the homies play some some punk and metal and stuff and we did that, but uh Ben is uh in severe need of food because of his diabetes. And so we we'll decided to run and grab something and the closest, quickest seeming thing, which was a poor decision, was Burger King. And so we went in there because it's Whopper Wednesday. We thought this was this, this is the day, you know, but no, man, it was a it took about 89 hours to we missed the whole first band because of this. There was like three <laughs> people in line in front of us and the poor people working in the back. There's one person in the back I can't even see and barely. And then there's one person on the till who looks like they just want to end it all so bad. And I don't blame <laughs> they, they just look so depressed and sad and just having a bad time. So we're all being really patient. Everybody in the Burger King is being really cool, except for the tweaky people who are tweaking real bad from you get tweakers down there, drugs yeah. and stuff and whatever. But they're being, even they were being like keeping to themselves and stuff and whatever. But always adds to the tension. But uh, anyway, there's You're uh, always looking over your shoulder. Oh, over your shoulder, somebody <laughs> might just tweak right into you. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like oh, we got bugs, bugs. Um, but uh, yeah. So long story, long as hell. Basically, uh, the guy in front, this old man in front of us, he just he leans over the counter to the the one woman working and just goes, uh, I just want to tell you guys that you're doing a really great job. And it's just too bad that you guys are so, so understaffed. And she just flipped out. She misunderstood what he said. She misinterpreted. What he said. She said, we are just two people. We're trying to do everything we can. OK, sir, we're just two people. And she oh like, my walked God. away and wa- went turned her back on him she's and stuff. being so and nice he, he the or old he, guy was yeah, being really he, nice trying his best to like let her know that like okay we, we understand we get it and she totally thought he was just being an asshole being like why is there only two people working who's just do anyway it was just a bit sad aye, time aye. i was just there like oh this is Dude, I really get it. I a get fun it. experience and then on top of that it was like an exploded burger thrown in against the wall <laughs> with like it had like a paper airplane on top of it and that was the wrapping that was supposed to be around it and like i'm pretty sure that we, when we went and ate it i don't know i didn't even taste it or think about it i was just look, listening to the bands and today i regret it is wreaking havoc with your lower colon it is a hor- my lower one yeah <laughs> you don't have to tell them specifically which of my colons it's bothering <laughs> so oh, specific shit. Uh, It'd shit, be man. awesome if these just weren't working, and we would feel like it's a defeat. It's okay. Thanks somebody, are here. Somebody, Thanks are here. Yeah, somebody just dropped a bag of bricks down the side of the... Anyway, um, there's a lot of lumber being moved around here. Yeah. They're building a house right up above us. We just decided this is where we were going to do it. Yeah, oh, here comes. There's a wooden bike again. Right in the middle of a heavy uh, construction site. Yeah, I don't remember what we are talking about. It was something dumb. This is my tummy hurts or something stupid. <laughs> my tummy hurts. Yeah, my tummy okay, hurts. Well, that was uh, good. You wins a thousand bucks, my tummy hurts. It's a good day, folks. She got it as a bonus for uh, working with her, her uh, company. Right, she so. won it. You're Solid. not seeing a single cent to that stuff. No, nope, never. But that's okay. Sephora she deserves it. Know. Yeah. Somebody's getting it. Well, we probably Z-Biscuit. will never never come here again, I'd say. <laughs> That's probably safe the to bombs say. Are Enjoy it now, folks. Yeah. Enjoy it now. It's atmospheric, but it's kind of scary. <laughs> it's so soothing hearing some, <laughs> like, giant mechanical spider run above us. Like, <laughs> Every five <laughs> seconds. Yeah. All right. So uh, that uh, segues us uh, into my beautiful. next segment. Homie is learning. I'm learning, not leeways. Um, so I got ten creepy meanings behind songs that you may or may not notice of notice uh some of them are very obvious and it's just like yeah duh but some of them are like oh okay cool like i've just been blindly singing singing the lyrics and not realizing what i'm singing it's kind of a cool little list it was brought to you by whatculture.com so i did not curate this list it is something i found on the internet but it was a good one so i'm deciding to use it okay nice <laughs> okay <laughs> proceed so number 10 starts off with who let the dogs out by baja man any clue what that could have possibly been referenced to somebody pants him who let the dogs out yeah it's a good guess i don't know baja man this is dope actually i kind of really like this i don't know it's, it reminds me of being it was just wait it can't be forever no <laughs> I, I was just thinking that it reminds me of being in the museum. Yeah. The, the old town. The we old decided town, to do the side the, effects going yeah, off the, the train. The old town, except for yeah. then, like, a F-150 goes by. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Baja Men. Who let the dogs out? The song is actually a telling tale of a group of horny men that the women refer to as dogs. 
Go to a party and despite much rejection, eventually engage in sexual activity of a particular variety, namely doggy style. Don't believe me? Take a look. This is the lyrics. Gotta tell myself, hey man, not get angry to any girls calling them canine. But they tell me, hey man, it's part of the party. You put a woman in front and her man behind. The slang then goes on to inform the listener that a doggy ain't nothing if it don't have a bone. <laughs> Rather crude, but we all managed to miss. This is not a surprising theme. I think everybody knows what it's about. Yeah. And maybe didn't look deeply into it because they go so quick and say, hi and stuff and like that. They're obviously not going to be like, and then I took the girl who said no, and then I shoved it in her butt, and that's because I say go. <laughs> it's obviously going to be a little bit more clever than that, right? And it was in the no. early 2000s. Not that I condone it. Wrong. You heard the uncut version. <laughs> wrong uh this next song number nine is actually very it's very obvious it's like if you listen to the song it's um the beatles run for your life off rubber soul it's like uh uh rather than another classic beatles love song this track is written from the perspective of a man who threatens to literally kill a particular woman if he catches her with another man the song is so upfront about its meaning it opens with these lines well i'd rather see you dead little girl than to be another with another man you won't keep your head little girl or i won't know where i am and then it just goes off to being basically like, yeah, if I see you with anybody else, you're dead. You're dead. No, no, not even a second chat. Dead. They're dead. so nice, the Beatles. Yeah. Yeah. They're coming yeah. for you, though. Number one in the world. Yeah. Number three. Or not number three. Number seven. Outcasts. Hey, yeah. Great song. I'm sorry. I just imagined the Beatles coming after me. It's not that scary. <laughs> <laughs> Ringo, get him with your drumstick. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's over there. Yeah. He's over with another woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say we get him. I'd rather see him dead, Paul. Anyway. Leave, just... leave him alone, John. Yeah, yeah, Yoko, Yoko. Yeah, Yoko is this exception. It's like, I think I see her with another man. He's like, yeah, they can have her. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, we had to have something to cut. <laughs> <laughs> there had to be something we... Anyway. Uh, anyways, next, Outcast. Yes. Uh, hey, yeah, you know, family okay. friendly song. Hey, I yeah. was about eight when it came out or seven. It's a, yeah, it's a happy song, you know, you sing the world. How could this possibly possibly be a creepy song? Um, Andre, Ice Cold, 3000s, marriage was collapsing, and that's what it's about. Well, that was unexpected. Why did you say Ice Cold? Uh, is that his middle name? I don't know. It just says Andre his Ice Cold 3000s. I've only ever heard him be Andre 3000. I didn't know his name was Andre Ice Cold 3000. <laughs> I don't know rap names could have middle names. Ice Cube was taken. Dude, my rap name is only one name. I'm losing out right now. I need to make a last name and a middle name for my rap name. Fuck. Just context is stupid. Now. Uh, context. Hot. Red hot. Uh, <laughs> fresh sliced monkey wrench. Oh, uh, yeah, right. Well, I'll just rewind this to see what we said, what oh, we came up geez. with earlier. It's perfect. Um... Andre begins by explaining the admiration for long-lasting couples as a long-term commitment, seeing it as an impossibility between him and his partner. Lyrics go, Thank God for mom and dad for sticking together, because we don't know how evidently the first first... Oh, that's just it. Sorry. Thank God for mom and dad for sticking to two together. That's what nice Andre 3000, though. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> we... <laughs> Because we don't know how evidently the first verse charts the loss of love between the two parties involved. And Andre further elaborates upon during the second. We get together, oh, we get together, but separate's always better when there's feelings involved. If what they say is nothing is forever, then what makes, then what makes, then what makes love the exception? That's it. So yeah. it's just him being a little bit bitter that his marriage was ending, I think, apparently. So, well, I mean. It was ending or that he was just being, trying to be real and say that the it most, was, most it was. marriages I think, end. Yeah. He's just being related. His marriage was collapsing at the time. Right. Yeah. Oh. Ice cold. That's why he turned ice cold after his marriage oh. collapsed. Yeah. He used to be warm blood. Yeah. Now he's ice cold. Andre warm blood 3000. Now it's ice cold. Ice cold. Yeah. I cool. mean, uh, he can I'm do whatever he that. wants. That yeah. guy is badass as hell. Yeah. He can do whatever he wants. Fucking love that guy. Uh, Goo Goo Dolls Iris. Obviously, this is a very, this is one of the obvious ones. It isn't hard to decode this one. So have yourself a little listen. But here's my favorite snippet that helps to prove the hypothesis. When everything feels like a movie, yeah, you believe just to know you're alive. He describes life as feeling like a movie in the sense that he is a spectator rather than a participator, forever watching the girl from a distance. And then obviously you believe to feel alive, self-harmed, blah. But I mean, that one's yet again just a sad love ballad kind of, I want the girl, Radiohead-esque. It's, the, it's like pre-emo. Yeah, exactly. It's primo. It's primo Donna. No, it's not. <laughs> not primo. Anyway. Number five, turning Japanese by the vapors. The Vapors made their one-hit wonder a double whammy, with it not only being creepy, but also somewhat racially insensitive. How is it both of these things? Well, consider for a moment that the singer is not being literal with the word, but is instead talking about his fervent masturbating over a picture of a girl he finds attractive. Fervent? 
That's the word. That's good. Why does it have to be? Why does it have to describe how how much <laughs> he's masturbating? How heavily? Is that what fervent <laughs> means? Well, it's like it's like how like fervent is like rushed. Yeah. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Oh yeah, you had to get it in quickly before you. Why see did the writer recording? decide to say fervent? Yeah, I you don't know. Have to. I is guess he, it's. I guess it's implied. I don't he's know. He's going for a, a, a righty award, so he's got to use a big dictionary. And he's in like the bush nearby, so he's not trying to hang around for very long. <laughs> I don't know. No, don't look at that bush. I don't mean he's in a bush nearby us. Oh God! Fuck! Uh, Never doing podcasts in the bushes again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in front of the uh, Kentucky settlers. Um, <laughs> the first verse describes his obsession with a picture of a woman. Be it as past or current lover or a completely str- or a complete stranger. However you look at it, he later goes on to state that everyone around me is a total stranger. Everyone avoids me like a cyclone ranger. Everyone. That's why I am turning Japanese. His lack of physical contact has led to a regular masturbation pattern. Okay, this one is a little debatable, but as there are numerous ways this line can be interpreted, but there's so one that many this? people subscribe to. In this instance... The term turning Japanese is less to do with embracing the culture of Japan and more to do with the face that he is pulling whilst he is well pulling. Insensitive? For sure. Creepy? No doubt. But that's yes. all easy to forget about when you hear the killer guitar solo. Air guitar's at the ready. What song? <laughs> uh, uh, I think I'm turning Japanese. No. I think I'm turning I don't think I've ever heard this before. But... I really think so. Okay. Yeah. All right. yeah, it's a very insensitive song, but apparently it's about masturbating, I guess. Um, that is... All sorts of stupid shit. Yeah. yeah that's great. Way to go. Um, number s- four, Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen, Jeff Buckley. Hallelujah is truly a beautiful song, which is done justice by both Leonard Cohen and Jeff Buckley, and nobody can take that away from it. It's not just praising the Lord. But it is a little creepy with regards to its poetic use of words that conceal the truest essence of the track. The real underlining meanings of the song are far less biblical and a lot more sexual. There was a time... This is lyrics. There was a time... When you let me know what's really going on below, but now you never show it to me, do you? I remember when I moved in, you, the holy dove, dove, was moving too, and every breath was drew, we drew, was hallelujah. Sorry with my, a little bit of dyslexic. That's one of the most delicate ways you could talk about lovemaking, honestly, the in the lyric. That's not too. very creepy at all. And every breath we drew was hallelujah, yeah. That's this is very the, sweet. Yeah, it poetry. is. It's, yeah, it is poetry. That is not creepy. And it's like, It's not about the Lord, but it's mm. definitely like, it's a metaphor for you know heavenliness fine Heaven, exactly. come on it's the cleanest way to that. <laughs> there's no it's not creepy this they're, is, they're stretching they're stretching hella this is the verse that most blatantly explores the issue making use of euphemisms like holy dove as not to be gratuitous and maintain its usage of holy verbal imagery the song is addressing the hallelujah of the orgasm rather than the praising variety keep in mind that this is not one of the most popular really. choices of music for funerals and suddenly things start to become less creepy and a little more comical no dude you yeah. guys are stretching he said with every breath we drew is hallelujah he's not only talking about orgasms only that's crazy yeah. he's just talking about enjoying the presence of someone he's with that's i don't know i don't know that's funny um yeah yeah a little bit of a stretch and that's what happens with these lists they're like shit i gotta come up with three it's more like yeah. it's like talking about any love song and saying they really mean they want to bang the person it's <laughs> like yeah I, okay but that's part pokey. of love the is it not pokey. like yeah yeah right <laughs> it was all about banging and you turn yourself around and the Baja man come out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Doki> Jesus. Style. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, man. Uh, number seven. This one's funny, I think. It's uh, Blistering the Sun by the Violent Femmes. Okay. Uh, the narrator, a confident young man, begins by informing us that he struts his stuff out on the street. Just like this gentleman. Come on, us. Yeah. Good. Our flower shipment has arrived. Yes, finally, all the flowers we ordered. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's quite a beautiful thing. Oh, well, regular another. person running? There's the daisies. It's oh. a little lighter. Under the train what tracks. What if it is stopped? This is Under the Train Tracks podcast. Oh. What would you do if, like, a bunch of people just kept running over like this, but then they just kept stopping above us until there must be, like, a hundred people above us? And they're just, like... They just, just kept stopping. And yeah. just listening? Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is filmed under a live studio audience. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like the fucking the laugh track. <laughs> we should put laugh tracks yeah. to this. It's so creepy. We should yeah. put laugh tracks to all of our, like, remote ones. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> that's 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 just in the woods yeah. with these people laughing. Yeah, that's sick, actually. Yeah. 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 I like that. Let's edit this out and then do that. Yeah, it's happening. It's <laughs> yeah. got it. Uh, okay, so he then states that he 
often stops and checks out the girls that he sees. Let's look a little closer of what happens after his lustful encounters. <laughs> Body and beats, I stain my sheets, I don't even know why. My girlfriend, she's at the end, she's starting to cry. Let me go on like I missed her in the sun, let me go on. Big hands, I know you're the one. Clearly at the sight of a pretty girl, he quickly loses all self-control and becomes consumed with lustful urges, turning to the quickest method of relief, a cheeky handshake with the monster. If you catch my drift... Rather than his girlfriend, the narrator's weapon of choice for tackling this task are his big hands. So yet again, another masturbation one. I mean, sure. Writing a song about wanking it, I guess. Kind of creepy. Oh, here come the crowds. They heard. Beautiful. Yeah, prob- yeah. Get, you know, get it while you can, folks, because we'll probably never do this again. Yeah, this is this is wonderful. Not gonna the be Under the Train Track podcast. Yeah. So number number three, Hello by Lionel Richie. The song is actually about a teacher that stalks one of his students that he falls in love with. Yikes. I've been alone with you inside my mind, and in my dreams I've kissed your lips a thousand times. I sometimes see you pass outside my door. Hello, is it me you're looking for? Admittedly, at no point in the song does it explicitly state that he's a teacher. Lustful thoughts towards a pupil, but those of you who have seen the music video will surely agree that it gets awkwardly disturbing by visuals showing us that in this case, as Lionel stalks a blind student, Hello, is it me you're looking for? Really classy, guys. However, the truly creepy part about the song occurs when he realizes we realize that this is more than a teacher's fantasy, and he drops the L-bomb, love, before even having introduced himself to her. And I want to tell you, I love you so much. Yeah. This is, I feel like this is, uh, maybe the song was written and was its own entity, and then somebody came up and said, we're going to do this, this is our idea for the music video yeah. for it. and then, Probably yeah. not written by Lionel Richie himself. He probably didn't decide how the the music video would go. If he did, that's pretty creepy and weird, and that's maybe his own side weird interpretation yeah. of Lionel it. Lionel Richie or, likes minors, apparently, is what this guy's saying. Admittedly. In, in a weird power Damn. struggle, like in a weird like power situation where right. they're a teacher or whatever. I mean, I've it's heard from numerous creepy. people that, that he is a weird dude. Okay, well, yeah. see, I mean, the fact that you went through with it and made the video and appeared in it and stuff, is really gross and gnarly. It's like, yes, I accept I the terms and conditions, that, they as say, long as I get to play the teacher. Totally, yeah, yeah <laughs> yikes. They, it just says right in it that uh, they, um, it doesn't say explicitly in there, it's like, but if you've seen the video, yeah. right? Like, they're they're trying to... Make, it's a just again. make yeah. it a, a love song or whatever, and then they like, mm. oh, if you look into it, it's actually very creepy the way they went with it. That uh, sucks. And then this brings us to more got, sexual oh, nature. One sec, I just got to say something funny about that song is that like my my roommate, yeah. apparently Chris, who, who's on one of our shows, remember you guys remember Chris uh, from earlier episodes? He had that for years when I first met him. Oh, we got people rolling up. We have to take a little, a little cut them. break. Yeah. But I was going to say we had uh, Chris used to have that as his ringtone week. Hello. Is it me you're looking for? That's a perfect like, out of his out of his pocket. That's dope. It's so amazing. That's dope. Yeah. I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> Holy shit. We got some we got some travelers that are going under the bridge. Yeah, they probably don't want to be on film. So uh Yeah, yeah so we yeah, we'll do a pause break. Hello. Go on. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. No, it's all good. We, Student uh, film. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank Thanks. you. Take care. Kind, saying that. Kind student, people. Film. Stu- student film <laughs> students of life that's right <laughs> thank you Mr. Miyagi yeah. um, okay well before we go to just break, tell people you're a student uh, before get we go away with break. anything that's right <laughs> I'm, I'm just learning I'm what? in the women's bathroom what? I'm learning I'm a student <laughs> <laughs> student <laughs> help students it's a Uvic thing yeah. oh you sweet angel yeah, yeah get in here yeah. look at my anatomy um, so uh, number two come on Eileen slow down Ry- Rinal Rinal <laughs> Rinal <laughs> Dexy's Midnight Runner. You know that song, obviously. Mm-hmm. It's actually about horse, course of sex. Come on, Eileen. Oh, I see what that is. Coerced, I guess. Coercive. Yeah, where are you pointing? Oh, it's way up there. I thought your thumb was. Oh out. yeah, that says like, grown, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coercive. Yeah, coercive. Yeah. Course of sex. So come on, Eileen. Oh, I swear, what he means at this moment, you mean everything. You in that dress, my thoughts, I confess. Verge on dirty. Oh, come on, Eileen. That's right. Every time you shout the phrase, come on, Eileen, you're joining in with the narrator's attempt to peer pressure poor old Eileen, who has grown so much in recent times, to go to bed with poor old Johnny Ray. This guy meant, the guy mentioned in the first line of the song, who voices his sadness over this, his stagnant sex life on the radio. So he's like, oh man, I haven't got laid in a while. So he's basically the first type of incel. 
and he's like coercing yeah, it's people. It's actually like the vibes I'm getting for uh, from a few of these. It's like even the Beatles there. It's like, dude, just chill out. Yeah, don't be an incel. Just yeah. yeah. You're being, you're being creepy. You're being very so creepy. This, you're, you guys are the part of the problem. That's it, yeah. The Lionel Richies what? and the Me? Beatles and the, yeah. the Baja men of the world. <laughs> They're all grouped together. <laughs> I never th- thought I'd see the Baja men and the Beatles on the same playlist, but here we are. Um, and number one, this is the creepiest one. And um, uh, listener warning uh, has some... Turn it off. Rude. Just turn yeah, it off yeah, right now. Yeah. It was nice to see you. Uh, I don't your know what it is. is advised. I'm already upset because he's going to ruin some song for me now. But no, this one was actually ruined like three years ago and is no longer allowed to play it on the radio. Uh, Rolling Stones, Brown Sugar. Oh. With possibly the creepiest and almost certainly darkest meaning of all the songs on the list, that song is Legendary Brown Sugar. But what could be so dark and creepy, you might ask? How about a song in which the narrator is having sex with underage girls sold into slavery? Yeah, that looks even nastier on paper. Gold Coast slave ship bound for cotton fields, sold in a market down in New Orleans. Scarred old slaver knows he's doing all right. Hear him whip the women just around midnight. Ah, brown sugar, how come you taste so good? Aha, uh-huh, brown sugar, just like a young girl should. Wow. Now that's dark. I mean, really dark. Cracking song, dude. Though. Whoa. And then they always go to compliment it, like, but banging song, dude. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, is yeah. it though? Air guitars at the ready. Yeah. You know yeah. how easy it is to make a cool rock song where and then you just don't put horrendous, horrible meanings yeah. in it? That it has been done thousands and thousands of times before. It's actually super easy to do it. You don't have to put heinous, villainous, terrible fucking awful shit and, in it so it's not like we have to stop and say yeah but great song though right guys yeah, it's, yeah, there's just plenty one of, those of great just, songs how about fuck that song leave it I to don't the know that's that, what it was Yeah, don't put your opinion in it how about you just leave yeah, that but we love Mick yeah. Jagger yeah. you know, what the fuck that guy no that one's actually done it's due diligence through not this list but it's actually been banned yeah, good. it's banned yeah because yeah, it's it, gnarly that's, yeah, I mean that's some okay shit. there's something to consider though because I mean I don't think they should be playing it on the radio but they should also maybe not forget about it like definitely talk about the fact that hey guys remember when we you know yeah a yeah. different era looked so ugly yeah. like a different era was so ugly I think that we just need to remember how ugly the past was I don't and think we need to blame to be... people or drag anybody through the mud it was a different time you exactly. know but and like it's not to be saying that Mick Jagger participated in that sort of stuff that was probably before his time as well oh I don't know man but I think I mean, that he, he just banged, turned 80 uh, I think he did a lot of underage girls stuff back then I think all those rock stars did that shit He's, the Rolling Stones are rolling on us right now so that was uh, that was the top 10 creepy songs with meanings you may or may not have known under undertone that were creepy what are you standing over there I'm just going to restart uh, the camera so uh, give us one sec we're taking, a, he, we're taking a pee break he he just set up somebody to fucking drop a bunch of bricks and shit on my head he just moved out of the way I better move <laughs> too okay we're back from our pee break ah yeah that I, was, I was that was relieving I, I just saw relief set Still is a statue the whole time and didn't move my hand from my leg, actually. He just pants. Yeah, I'm currently sitting in my waist. Um, That's I've not got, true. I've got one more interesting thing that just okay. came out. Um, did you hear, like, that whole Magic the Gathering, Lord of the Rings? Oh, we just made those people go back. That's sad. Yeah. They just don't want to be on our student project. Anyway. What the hell is that, that popping from the bushes? Uh, well, it could be a cougar. That's probably why they went back. <laughs> oh, we made those people uh, ah. turn around and walk away. Uh, yeah. And there's like a cougar on the other yeah. side of us. Yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, did you hear about that um, card that they released? Uh, I think it was last year, 2022, end of 2022, beginning of 2023 this year. It was uh, Lord of the Rings Magic the Gathering crossover. Oh, a card. It was a card. Oh, TCG. Okay. Uh, and you, cool. Did you hear about that? No, no, I didn't know so there'd be a crossover. What, what they did, they did a crossover, and then there was they had the one ring card, and it was one of one. They only made one of it. Like, not, you know, when you like, get Pokemon One cards. singular card, one not, singular not a printing. Card. That's it. One card. Whoa. And uh, a dude in Toronto found the card in June. Oh, it, it went into packs. and Yeah, and then so people had to find the one ring to rule them all. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. That is pretty cool. I wish I knew about it I at like the that. time because I would have bought packs to try and find that. Shh, quiet, Frodo. <laughs> the Kentucky Derby. Shh. She starts. <laughs> the ring wraiths. They're above us. All right. Uh, a retail, so here, I got this story for you. A retail worker from Toronto who made the once-in-a-lifetime discovery of an ultra-rare game card has sold the precious possession to Austin Richard Post, better known as the rapper and artist Post yeah. Malone. 
the one ring. You would buy that, yeah. of course, <laughs> dude. The one he's ring. Just the coolest dude, man. I yeah. just want to be friends. He, I would too. He yeah. seems like the most genuine, dopest dude. He doesn't give a fuck. He likes what he likes, and that's it. The one ring found in June is a collectible one of a kind card created for the tabletop fantasy game Magic the Gathering as a part of a collection celebrating J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings series of novels. Because of the card's value, the person who found it originally chose to remain anonymous. But <laughs> on Tuesday, <laughs> Yeah, I heard myself. I'm chilling. No, no, you did great. Thank you. But on Tuesday, Brooke Trafton, so that was uh, yesterday, two days ago, Brooke Trafton real, revealed himself as the one who pulled the card to rule them all. He posted a video on Instagram of himself selling the card to popular recording artists and noted fan of the game. Trafton told CBC Toronto he sold the card for $2.64 million. But after conducting interviews, he was still on his way to an eight-hour shift. So he's still working. He was a retail worker, and he pulled the card. And then now he just he made 2.64 selling it to Post Malone. How dope is that? It's like winning it's the lottery in a cool way. It's like, I, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? That's one of the most badass lotteries you could win right there. That's pretty sweet. Get to meet Post Malone. I know. Like, like, it's like If holy. I could win the lottery and have Post Malone give me the fucking thing and then also somehow make him happy because I'm giving him something. I know, yeah. How would I? How yeah. Would I yeah. This is a really uh, excellent type of lottery. You you get fandoms on both sides of Magic the Gathering and Lord of the Rings, which are both amazing franchises with some of the coolest looking art that's ever graced the earth. And you get the one ring yeah. and it's got lore behind it, you know, and it's yeah. the one card that was ever pressed. You somehow pulled that shit out of there. And then you're like, I know exactly what I'm going to do with this because, you know, Posty said he wants that or whatever. Like as soon as somebody wins it and then you go and talk, I hey, guess what I found, man. You know, we how got much this. you want, let's do this. And then now you're like having a friendly conversation with Post Malone and your life is real. Yep. Like what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> that's insane, such a cool dude. day, yeah. dude. That's a pretty cool story. It makes you happy. It happened yeah, a couple days ago. I like yeah. it. Yeah, it's a good one. Oh. There's Post Malone. <laughs> racing to show us the car. He's into all kinds of shit. Yeah. He's also, yeah, he also bought a- He gets like a wheel feral, a wheel, a wheel feral, wheelbarrow <laughs> full of bricks. <laughs> wheel feral. <laughs> I just want to draw that now. I want AI to make Will Ferrell into a wheelbarrow now. Wheel, so Ferrell. wheel Ferrell. That's awesome. Oh, uh, fuck. Yeah, yeah, it was Lance Armstrong. It's early, bike by the way. Yeah, I, I just week. woke up like right before we started this podcast, actually, and drove straight over for here, sure, basically. Man. And I, I, my brain's not put together, but um, it is it ever. Last segment I got for us. So these are unriddles. Okay, so I'm going to say them, and you just react. You should have just said they're riddles so that they would just would fall flat. But you would be so confused, I think. I'm... I'm I'm starting out confused. Well, here we go. All right. What has three feet and sneezes? Five, four, three, two, one. Answer? I don't know. My cat sneezes. What? It's an unriddle. Three feet and sneezes. (laughs) My cat sneezes. Your cat sneezes. My cat named Sneezes. Yeah, but you... Okay, phrase the riddle one more time, though. What has three feet and sneezes? My cat sneezes. It doesn't work because the words don't work. And sneezes is not... And My, is sneezes. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> On the next one. Oh, it was a really good unriddle, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. I, I just unriddled you. Yeah, it's true. Oh, man. Why can't you pay nothing. a lumberjack back? Why can't you pay a lumberjack back? Um, pay a lumberjack back because they pay it forward I don't know he's already got wood can't pay him back because he's already got wood okay okay I'll think about that later Um, no idea Um, why shouldn't you leave your mother in the tub it's her business you can do whatever she wants in the tub I'm not trying to I'm trying to get involved. Wonder Bread goes on sale tomorrow. Okay, okay, okay. I'm beginning to understand. I already start to learn am the a ways. Little bit upset. I was already, see. I was already confused. Regardless, this is not a riddle. <laughs> it's an unriddle. How many chances should you give a genie? Um, I should give him zero fucking chances. No chances, genie. Sixteen. Why? Why? We could talk about this for days. We could. Why? We could, we could break it down to the math and the science of it, but 16. You get 16 chances, Genie. You fucked up seven times. Another eight of those, nine of those. That's it. That's, that's it for you. That's Sealed top, in a fucking yeah. lamp under the uh, cave of wonders. <laughs> that's it. Come see, come saw, bitch. Um, name the fastest animal on the planet. 
<laughs> water buffalo. Peanut butter. Oh, peanut butter. Ah, fuck. True. That was a fast horse. Peanut butter. Peanut I had butter a the lot horse. of money on peanut butter. Oh. If four, five, six, then. Seven, eight, nine. Nailed it. Oh, fuck. Finally. That's a shitty unriddle because it just made sense. Yeah, I guess What's so. That? That's a bad unriddle. It's the worst. It was just a lame great. riddle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. stupid. It was a little. Uh, What's the difference between a tree and a penguin? 15 feet. How do you know that? How do you know? How do you get that right? Anyway, continue. <laughs> Holy shit. Dude. That's Nailed crazy. I don't That's know. how my brain works. I'm looking, at my, okay. I'm looking at the answer sheet. What's the highest point on your body? Uh, this one. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, your tonsils in a jar on the top shelf. Uh, yeah, I, I, they're pickling still. They're pickling. Explain string theory. No, no. You I, can't. It's not around yet. That's good. Yeah. You got it. Pretty much. <laughs> It's not around yet. It's not around yet. What's the best name for a cat? Whatever the cat is called. Footfucker. Uh, no, not true. There, I would disagree on that one. I think Stephen Hawking wrote this, so I, I, I will, I will have to agree with him. The unriddle, and that's it. That was all my unriddles. That's pretty good, man. I like that. I, I don't think I did like it. Actually, I lied to you just now. I don't yes. like it. Untruth it's me. Stupid. You untruth yeah, me. <laughs> this is one of those unstatements. <laughs> <laughs> where I say something, but it's not even close to what I meant. Where I didn't like that, <laughs> and it didn't make any sense. It's pure nonsense. I think several people might have turned this off. And I say several people generously, like there's several people. To well, I waited for the, the end. So uh, I got you. Got you here. Yeah. People uh, all over the world. Nonsense. Hey, maybe they'd like that. Maybe they. Maybe they scientifically going to break these down and figure out why each meant what it meant. Oh my God! Can you imagine? Yeah. People have made entire careers out of looking into unriddles. That's right. Unriddles. Well. Do your homework, look it up, comment, tell us what they mean. So there's a cement truck coming, so just wait. I thought it was a popcorn truck. Same shit. Different weight. Uh, anyways, that's all I got, homie. Okay, man. Well, this has been fun. I don't know. I like this little weird spot we yeah, found. Yeah, this is and, dope uh, as hell. I think we're just going to keep trying to find little weird spots because Dylan got these little, I like to call them the rabbit's foot. The rabbit's foot DJI. The, yeah. Some of the best mics I've ever owned. They're yeah. unreal. What He's they going to say this and then we get it inside and the sound's just like, <laughs> some of the best mics. <laughs> I just got unaudioed. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch. Oh, man, my unbirthday present. <laughs> cool. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. So this is either a screaming, you know, yeah, review her- of these DJI mics or I am lying and it's nothing. Yeah. We're testing these mics out. So uh, it's on. It's nothing to do with our fa- our fault. If no, it, sucks. it can't it's be. Nothing to do with it's us. It's nothing to do with us. It's all to do with the pro audio company. We've chosen the perfect location. It's We've nothing chosen... to do with the Kentucky Derby going over <laughs> every every five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> the hunt. My brain said when you said Kentucky D- Kentucky Derby, I was like the Manitoba Hunt is what came into my head. What the hell is that? That's not something. The Manitoba Hunt is, is the, around. The hunt for Red October. Yeah, the Manitoba Hunt made it over here to BC finally, and they're crashing over bridges everywhere near you. It's a long relay. Look it up. Oh man, this is probably the most nonsensical podcast I've been a part of in a long time, and I I like it. I it's like, funny considering I, yeah. the last one was about aliens, and it was very serious. It was. <laughs> I was straight from the horse's mouth. Yeah, dude. Being like, David Grush. We're being crazy and David Grush. David Grush. Um, but yeah, we're being. Oh yeah. I uh, actually follow up thing about that from Brad. Actually, okay. Um, he had a follow up thing um, as to why why it was that they let. Oh yeah, here they go. Yeah. Sure, censor me. Try to censor me. <laughs> That's the man on a bike. It's the man trying to stop us from getting the <laughs> truth out. <laughs> yeah, just Donald Trump on a bike, <laughs> on a huffy. Stop. Stop down there. Bunch of losers. <laughs> don't, don't listen to a thing they say. Don't listen to a Get thing they say. off the river. Yeah. The yeah. river. Okay, anyways. <laughs> uh, he said uh, this is like why they let Grush talk, basically. It said, Colehart explained this in a recent Need to Know episode. Basically, Grush was ready for them to deny him the right to speak about it. So he was ready. He was like, either way this went. He didn't know if they were going to let him speak or not. But if they were... He was planning for them to not let him speak. So what he would have done then is sued, uh, which he was ready to do, uh, which would have forced some information to be brought before a court to investigate who is telling the truth. So they would have had to go through the legal system through the ringer anyway. So Uh. and it would have been even more rigorous testing, right? Because it's the. Yeah. So it said only way for them to not have to do that is to allow him to talk about general aspects. He explained it better, but I don't have the time to look to the link episode right now. I'll show you be able to find it. This, the path through the... Okay, so yeah, somebody basically... The username is Bob Lazar's Peen Puddin. (laughs) (laughs) 
he's That's a the fan. Most reputable source. He's a yeah. fan. No, no the first one was Psycho the second, but uh, the next person says, um, Bob Lazar's Bean Putin says this, the path through the courts would have been much, much worse for anyone trying to keep this secret. So that's the TLDR. Basically, if they weren't going to let him talk, uh, then he would have sued them, uh, which he would have been within his right to do. And he had like an airtight legal case ready. Right. And so in rather than letting him do that and drag the entire information out in front of all sorts of people that they don't want having that in yeah. the legal system and in the public eye, instead they say, OK, you can talk, but only about this much stuff. And he goes, OK, and they make deal. a deal. Right. Yeah. So that's where it's at. Right. So and hopefully he's paving the way for future whistleblowers to come forth and share what that's they know. Pretty rad. Well, that, that's a lot of effort, too. Well, it's like, that, wow, like a lot of people would be like, fuck, wow. That uh, uh, I don't remember if it was I think it was after the fact after our podcast as well. But Brad messaged me as well and said or we were talking after and he said that he said, remember that bill that they were trying to get passed? Um all those, all those high-level politicians on both sides of the, you know, red and blue situation. Everybody, all these, all these high-level people. Um, I wish I could remember a single name because I'm friggin' blanking or whatever. Like Rubio and them. Basically, they want they put out a uh, they put out a huge bill that said basically it's the law to come forward with all the information that you have. It says if you have technology, it's the law to bring it to us now. If you're a company or a tech company or something and you're sitting there and you have reverse engineering some UFO shit, right? Yeah. you come to us with it now because we're at a point where the human race really needs it. it yeah. It's a, it's a life and death thing. You got to bring people to be above what, right. what we know. Yeah. Right. We, we don't have like single uh, organizations, you know, yeah. having all the power to something that could help the world. So that's essentially the bill that they were passing. And just, just the one page that I read, super, Oops. Uh, the one page that I read um, actually had included all that stuff in a way that made sense to me, which was exciting. And then he went and scrolled through and there was like 20 more pages of stuff that it was going and they passed it. Nice. After Bo- or after um, David Grush's testimony, the whole, whole, whole Congress after hearing. we yeah. talked to Brad about it, yeah. they passed that bill. So now people have to do it. They That's have dope. to bring their shit forward. So for that him. is really dope. It's so just actually to like such break a cool... it down quickly for people who may not have watched the last right. episode, David Grush, he's just uh, one of the top, uh, like a top FBI, was he? I don't remember exactly what he was. His, I'm his... terrible with regurgitating facts, but basically he was a, he's a whistleblower that's coming forward with all sorts of information about UAPs. And he was a top politician for sure. And confirming. he was also had huge clearance within the FBI realm um, of all projects. And he was um, like a military terry pilot i believe and he was also he, oh, he, he, the list goes on and on for this was, guy yeah but uh he was um a very important person um politically and he was coming and whistleblown about um ufos uh stuff that was hidden from 2004 just, just trying our, to get stuff declassified yeah essentially. He, yeah he's basically doing being a whistleblower for uh basically telling the world that aliens are in fact real and that the company you know countries do have do you believe biomass and they do have uh you know th- they have non-human biomass they say or whatever so they have some alien body or whatever tissue or something that is not of a human origin. And right. I guess they're saying not of an earthly origin. You know, it's like, sure, it's not human. It's not a duck either. You know? <laughs> but like, I, I don't know why they say non-human and they just non-earthly, you know, or yeah. whatever, something like that. But that's just language, which, as you know, language is usually the source of all arguments. That's right. Yeah. So anyways, yeah, that was a, yeah, it was a very good episode. If you want to watch it, it's, it's up. We yeah, have my a cousin full, full, full filmed episode on uh, YouTube. Yeah. And uh, go back one episode. Ep- episode and yeah, learn about episode. aliens it was yeah. very dope but uh anyway yeah i was just saying uh, i didn't mean to s- you know, go so hard sideways with it but basically it's just funny that this this podcast was so ridiculous and that the one before it was actually about something that seems more ridiculous but it was serious it was really <laughs> serious yeah, yeah it was a serious thing. yeah this was like lighthearted. some some fun facts uh, about some weird songs and post malone yeah no, and, dude. Uh, and the Kentucky stuff. Derby. Hey, Anyways. Hey, your I girlfriend think... won a thousand bucks. Dude. I'm a girlfriend won a thousand so, bucks. Uh, let's That's just call rad. it there. Yeah. All um, right. Love you guys. Thanks for sticking with us. And love hopefully you. the sound quality is good. I stop the beat. Hey, how's it going? It's confusing because my voice comes through both of them at different times. Left and right in stereo. I don't know. Which, which one's this? Uh, it doesn't. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> which one's the left? Which one's the left one? <laughs> How will they know what I'm saying on the yeah. right side? We're going to have some traffic noise, but that hopefully is okay with our viewers. We'll do, uh, you know. Uh, my girlfriend just texted me, I just won $1,000.